Trouble in the shed. Sir Topham Hatt sat in his office and listened. Sir Topham Hatt frowned and said, What a nuisance passengers are. How can I work with all this noise? The station master knocked and came in, looking worried. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking, there is no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We cannot allow that. Will you quieten the passengers, please? I will go and speak to Henry. He found Henry, Gordon and James looking sulky. Come along, Henry, he said. It is time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon rudely. We don't shunt like common tank engines. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. And all three engines let off steam in a cheeky way. Oh, indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt severely. We'll see about that. Engines on my railway do as they are told. He hurried away, climbed into his car and drove to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left. He thought sadly. Edward was shunt in. Leave those trucks please, Edward. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hat kindly. Off you go then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines and that day the trains ran as usual. But when Sir Topham Hatt came next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward sadly. They said tender engines don't shunt. And last night they said I had black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt, but all the same, you'd be happier in your own yard. We need a tank engine here. He went to an engine workshop, and they showed him all sorts of tank engines. There were big ones and little ones. Some looked happy and some sad and some looked at him anxiously, hoping he would choose them. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said Percy happily. So he bought Percy and drove him back to the yard. Edward, he called, here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do and they had a happy afternoon. Once Henry came by, hissing as usual. <sighs> said Percy suddenly. Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you wished him, laughed Edward. I can't wish like that. Oh, said Percy modestly. That's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to wish loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Sir Topham Hatt sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said importantly to Edward. Shh, shh, here he comes. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry, Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like common tank engines. 
So I have shut them up and I want you both to run the line. Common tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy here will help too, said Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy excitedly. Edward and Thomas worked the line, starting at opposite ends. They pulled the trains, whistling cheerfully to each other as they passed. Percy sometimes pulled along the branch line. Thomas was anxious, but both driver and guard promised to take care of Annie and Clarabelle. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Henry, Gordon and Jane stayed in the sh shut in the shed and were cold, lonely and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly.